Each and every Sunday for the past 84 years, the pipe organ at First Methodist has filled our sanctuary with beautiful music, guiding our voices and spirits in classic worship. For those of you who have worshiped with us regularly, you know that the instrument can provide us with the quietest string and chime sounds as we pray, or can roar forth with full abandon as we sing Christ the Lord is risen today on Easter morning. What you may not know, however, is that it's been nearly 60 years since the organ has undergone any major restoration and is currently in desperate need of an overhaul so that it may continue to serve us for generations to come. Keys and sounds have already begun to stop playing as they should. Conversely, we also have pipes that sound when they are not supposed to. These problems are only going to increase and become more noticeable as the console continues to age. Let me demonstrate. This is the sound we need for a, an average hymn on a Sunday morning. But you can see here the problem is this. If I start playing up the keyboard, see so we have no sound out of that note here in the middle of the keyboard. have no sound there. And then as I go back down the keyboard, you see now nothing's coming out. One major reason that this is happening is because of problems with the console, where I'm sitting, which functions as the organist's control panel. Think of it like buying a house from the 1960s that has never had its wiring updated. We want to bring that wiring up to date, and the most cost-efficient and effective way to do that is to replace the console with a new console that features today's digital technology. While that is the first part of the project, however, it is not the entire solution to fixing the organ. Because an organ is not just the console, but rather the wind chests, pipes, and leathers, and wiring that make the sounds we hear each week. Even if we have a brand new console with new wiring, there are multiple issues in the pipe chambers themselves that need addressing. Let's go upstairs and take a look. The organ has been expanded several times over the years, and builders and organ curators who have served and expanded the instrument did the best possible job they could given the available technology of the time. The south chamber, which houses the swell division, is laid out like most organ chambers should be, all on one level with ease of access for maintenance. In the north chamber here, however, you can see, because the organ was built in many stages by different builders, the wind chests and pipes had to be placed at different heights. This stratification of the pipes and of the wind chests causes uh, great problems with tuning. Furthermore, because the pipes come from so many different sources, they are not unified in a grand tonal scheme. These two factors cause recurring issues with the, not only the tuning of the organ, but the quality of the sound of the organ itself. I think of it a bit like an automobile. You have a frame from the 1930s. You have a shiny new hood that was added in the 1940s. You have electrical work and um, engine work that was redone in the 1960s. What you have is an automobile that might drive, but it's difficult to manage, and it really doesn't make any aesthetic sense. So we're up here in the uh, north chamber at the moment. Um, and first, most importantly, when people think of a pipe organ, they think of the pipes, of course. What many don't know is the pipe organs of this time period also have countless small pieces of leather that are used in the instrument's playing action. The leathers are hidden inside the organ's wind chests, which open and close the valves, letting air into the individual pipes. Our leathers were last replaced sometime in the 1990s. After 25 to 30 years of use, they need to be replaced. Just imagine wearing leather shoes you've worn every Sunday for 30 plus years. It might simply be better to walk to church barefoot. Unfortunately, if the leathers fail, the organ will not produce sound, even with a brand new console. You can see here, we have a little example of the leathers. You can see how they're even beginning to fray, how the, the leathers become brittle. I can actually just get it off. It's actually coming off right on my hand. So again, right here, we can see pipes at two different levels. We've got a wind chest up here that was added sometime in the 60s or 70s. In addition, as opposed to where the main chest is down at this level, down at this level right, right behind the camera actually here. And then we have the pedal pipes built up on this, on this wind chest here. 
And what we ultimately want to do with new modern digital technology, we'll be able to actually, since we need to replace the leathers and build new wind chests anyway, we'll be able to actually build wind chests and reconfigure the pipe work in here. Wind chests that'll take far less space than the older technology used to allow. And so we'll actually be able to reconfigure the pipe so that we can get them all down on one level on the floor um, for ease of, of access, for ease of maintenance. And of course, because they will all be on one level, it will imp vastly improve the tuning and sound issues that we've been having. Okay, so here we are in the south chamber. You can see on this side, at least, we've got the, the chest, the wind chest as it should be, all on one level. Again, this wind chest needs replacing, however, because the leathers are deteriorating. And so we'd want to bring that up to date. You can also see here, down here at the, lo at the bottom here, the, the wiring and how scary that looks. You, you would not want this in your house, this type of wiring these days. You want new wiring. Also, we have a significant issue with the building and the rooms itself. You can see up at the ceiling, cracks in the ceiling, and a big crack across the walls. We also have cracks on the north side of the chamber, in the north chamber. Um, and those uh, cracks are shedding um, dust and pieces of plaster into the pipes. Now the particles from these cracks fall into the pipes and that affects not only the sound quality and tuning of the pipes, but sometimes even the ability of the pipe to sound at all. So we need to, when the pipes are removed for the redo, we would then also replace the plaster uh, with drywall. And we also want to address the HVAC in these rooms. The number one thing that affects tuning is temperature. And so uh, a, a better air handling system that moves air from the sanctuary through the pipe chambers is gonna help regulate the temperature, which is so vi vital to maintaining the tuning. We desperately need to fix all of these issues by replacing the console, taking all the pipes out, fixing the nearly century old plaster walls with drywall, improving the HVAC and lighting systems in the organ chambers, and then updating, cleaning, and restoring the wind chests and pipework. We've contracted Reynolds Associates, an Indiana-based organ company, to work with us in repairing, restoring, and updating our organ. I'd like to introduce the president of Reynolds Associates now, Thad. Hello. I am Thad Reynolds with Reynolds Associates Organ Builders. I have been working with churches like yours for 47 years, and I am particularly excited about working with First UMC in Bloomington, and with one of the most historical organs and music programs in Indiana. We are sympathetic to this organ and to its history, and we want to preserve it. In doing so, we will also preserve much of First Church's financial investment in the organ over the decades. Pipe organs are built to be rebuilt, and saving this instrument is the right thing to do musically, historically, and environmentally. Chuck has given us a brief recap of the need and we have carefully evaluated this instrument. The details of the work that is needed are complicated and extensive and detailed, but briefly, here are some of the highlights of what we'll be doing. We will remove and refurbish nearly all of the 3,000 pipes and carefully adjust the speech of each so they speak properly and consistently. This process is much like training a choir, improving each individual voice and then teaching them all to blend together properly. We'll replace the decaying leather, the rotting wiring, and the other deteriorated mechanisms. We'll redesign the arrangement of the pipes and the other components to improve their sound quality and serviceability. And of course, we'll install a brand new custom-built console of solid hardwood and a state-of-the-art computer-driven control system that will eliminate the thousands of worn out and burned up contacts in the old relays and provide proper electrical protections that are missing in some cases. The new wiring will meet the National Electrical Code standards, which this wiring currently does not. Each part of your pipe organ will be cleaned, renewed, or replaced. When we have completed your project, your instrument will be in new condition so that your organ and your ministry can remain one of the best in Indiana 
for generations to come. First Methodist has been my home congregation since 1994, when as a freshman I walked through the doors and first heard Charles Webb dancing over the keys of the pipe organ. My entire life has been shaped by the music I have experienced and in which I have participated here at FUMSI, and by the many, many members of my extended church family. The sounds of the pipe organ and the many incredible musicians that have sung alongside it have blessed our congregation and our worship with some of the finest church music in Indiana. The organ's music has drawn countless people into the life of this church community and helped shape their faith journeys. The effect of a wind-blown pipe organ leading the human voice in praise to God each Sunday cannot be fully appreciated until it is no longer available. If we do not act soon, we may lose the ability to continue praising God with the beautiful music of our pipe organ. I hope you'll support the, this campaign for music ministry so that we may restore our organ to serve the congregation faithfully for another 60 plus years. Will you join me in helping to restore the organ by making a gift to First Methodist? Hi, I'm E.G. White, along with Chuck Cooksey and Mike Arthur. We are the directors for the, an upcoming capital campaign that is being planned a year from now in 2024. At that time, all of us will be asked to give above and beyond our regular giving. Besides retiring our debt from 2000, we'll also be raising the money to restore our beautiful organ. We estimate the cost of restoration to be about $1 million. If you would like to go ahead and begin to give for our organ restoration, simply write on your check, organ, or scan the QR code on the screen. We'd love to get a head start through your generosity. All three of us are available to be contacted if you have questions about this campaign. This church has provided many incredible blessings over its 200 year history. Our music ministry is truly a blessing for this congregation. Join us in beginning to pray about what God might be leading you to give to ensure that our music ministry continues for the next 50 years.